Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. This is the August 28th uh, Tinderbox meetup. Um, we're here to talk about personal knowledge management, how we're all trying to figure out to collect our notes, curate our notes, create information, and then contribute that to the world to make a difference uh, in our particular uh, and specific domains and approaches to, uh, to life. Um, the typical format for those that are watching this for the first time is um, we introduce <coughs> to the show or into the session. Um, they tell us about what they're doing, problems, challenges that they're having. Um, once that's done, we dig into asking um, community members if they have any specific issues uh, that they're trying to contend with with their own journey. Uh, and then from that, we then dig into some, um, uh, you know, various examples and case studies and things like that. Uh, I actually do have an agenda for, uh, that I'd like to go through today which is um, really inspired by Tom Diaz, one of our longstanding community members, where he called me before the call saying, can't make the meeting, but I'd love it if you guys could talk about um, knowledge discovery within a tinderbox file. Basically, once you've got a bunch of notes in there, how do you find stuff? How do you discover stuff? Um, and uh, interestingly enough, I was up till midnight last night doing exactly that. And about two minutes prior to this session, uh, Mr. Bernstein, who can't make it today, uh, he and I did a quick assessment of, um, you know, un 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 unclogging the hairball and my efforts to achieve just that. So I want to show you guys uh, what we were able to solve today. So that that's my agenda. Um, so welcome, everyone. We've got nobody new. So let's go to the next phase of our topic. Is there anything in particular that um, members of the community are struggling with or are, are challenged with and or which is very much of the theme of this uh, this meetup because it's not just about technology and tactics, but it's rather rather the strategy of thinking. Do you have any thought thought conundrum that you're working with? And David actually, in preamble to the today's session, had one. So maybe David, you want to jump in and uh, uh, walk us through what you're doing? Uh, yeah, this is a uh, a classic. I'll hide myself so people can get a good shot of this. Uh, what is the meaning of the word settlement? A single word, single term. Uh, and that's all, to me, that's always- an, an No, no you're, you're popping, you're the, the picture's going in and out. So uh, can you start that over again? And let us My see- The picture mean. is going in and out or- Yeah, I wanna see, well, let's see the word settlement. Can you share your screen somehow? Or you're just showing us your picture, but it's kind of too small for us to see. Is there a way for you to share screen or something of that nature? Uh, share screen. It says share screen. Whiteboard. There we go. Let's see. Does that work? That works. Perfect. That's what we want to see. Okay. Now I can't see anything. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? Uh, how does one... David, put it side by side. It's a frustration I have with Zoom and good morning. Um, side by side, more, where do I participate? So, so you know? probably have Zoom maximized. Uh, it could be, who knows? Yeah. So take it off maximized and then you should be able to see um, your Tinder box screen and just place them side by side. How do I take it off? Well, well you, hit, you hit the escape key or on the top, <coughs> tap your, your mouse on the top left. Here. I'll be right back, everyone. Right. Um, Pressing buttons, who knows what's going on. All right, well, that's fine. I mean, if you, you don't, we don't necessarily need to see it or you need to see it, you can just talk us through it. We're, we're right in the center of the screen is the word sentiment. Settlement. Or settlement, sorry. Uh, and around it, the, uh, the underneath it, uh, behind this, this, is, this visual is from a, a product called Visual Thesaurus. The database, the file underneath it is WordNet. Okay. Uh, are you from, are, uh, are you familiar with WordNet? I am not, and I'm getting terribly excited as you're thinking about it. I love discovering new tools, so <laughs> let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, so, a, 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 in the context of knowledge discovery or just just discovery, a perpetual challenge is I'm on one side of the table and you're on the other side of the table, and it's guaranteed just because we're using the same word does not mean we're talking about the same thing. Especially if you're talking to an English person versus a U.S. person. 
Or do you think you're both speaking English and you're not? Yes, and, and, <laughs> and uh, my business partner is British, and so I tend to drop in terms like, well, English terms, British like, English, but anyway. Like, like being um, stuffed, totally different. <laughs> so uh, settlement, this is from a friend. Uh, we were about two hours into a discussion, haggling over the, the meaning of the word settlement. And I tend to abuse language because there's no, uh, you can only go so far into a formal dictionary and people, particularly me, I'm certainly guilty of hanging additional <coughs> meanings and uses on terminology. Yeah. This friend, Peter, uh, ran check processing for the Boston Federal Reserve for quite a while. Uh, and in the day, it was quite a physical challenge to process upwards of 2 million checks per night. Yeah. So for him, at the, and the end result of that process is people would gather in the day, people would go to a central room and settle their checks. Yeah. There was nothing in this definition that indicates that precise use of the word that very professional, very precise banking term of the use of the word settlements. Yeah. This, this is a perpetual challenge uh, for human beings where we just kind of assume, well, I'm using a word and, and uh, you kind of nod in agreement that you seem to appear to understand, but I'm using my own little unique meaning and we stumble along yeah and this gets and and, and i i duly notice uh in your wonderful demonstrations i mean uh the issue of naming variables is th this is built on top of my experience there you know when you're thinking about a problem you're thinking about the problem you're not thinking about naming some a collection of variables that you're using to solve the problem right and reason for my interest, a significant reason for my interest in uh, Tinderbox is how to look inside working software and surface, bring to the surface in perhaps a display like this, what that term actually means in the context of its use. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, that's my two cents. Go to it. All right. Uh, okay. Anybody, David, any comments, questions about this? Uh, sure. Th there's a related question. It's actually sort of on point for the knowledge discovery thing, which is to use sort of the same data and maybe some of the same visualization technique um, for uh, finding synonymous or near synonymous usages in different notes or different aspects of, of what you've got. Um, so you call something a settlement in one place um, and an agreement in another. Correct. Um, and it was, it was some context. Then those two notes have possibly some uh, useful relationship to each other, but you can't match the exact terms. Yeah. Right. A synonym, so, a synonym search, not uh, uh, or, or uh, in knowledge uh, discovery, uh, it's sort of a synonym matching across a bunch of things because it's not necessarily what you're searching for that you want to surface those relationships for. It, it's, yeah, because synonyms tend to, I think, tend to be used in uh, A and B are, you know, synonyms for exactly the same thing. And I'm really more interested in things that really overlap. The example I personally tend to use is postal code and zip code. So synonyms uh, versus what? What's an what do you, what's the term for? So synonym is one thing, antonym is another. What's the term for overlapping things? I don't know. That's that's butt in the chair research uh, on a systems analysis programming task. Okay. Because uh, unfortunately, I mean, you haven't lived until you had a discussion with somebody who thinks that uh, Canada is a foreign country, uh, and uh, that. Uh, there's a, there's a story that went around Boston, early days of mutual funds, that the system was written to only handle zip codes. And a client with a bunch of money moved to Toronto and they couldn't mail him his statements. Yeah. 
and uh, and if you're deep inside the bowels of systems, you're likely to define zip code with wrongly as only five numbers and postal code as, uh, you know, six or seven characters, depending on how, how you want to do it. Uh, but functionally, when I reach into the pile, I want to find both of them. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, hold on, guys. Uh, yeah, go keep going. I got to. So are, just... we on the, are we on the? Isn't this just there? the reality of language? I mean, words have meanings. The internal dictionary app that Apple computers have, a settlement is the process of settling an account. So it's a circular definition that has no real meaning. <laughs> or think about words in computer coding. Right, you're like because to pass, you have to you have to learn that, and your brain has to flag that in your neural network somewhere. That to pass data, as in P A R S E, has a very particular meaning. Um, and I don't know if we can really resolve that. Well, well that's a question, and and I do apologize. I was listening to everything while I was just grabbing mm -hmm. breakfast. What is the topic? <laughs> All right, so let's okay. So no worries. We what can, am I we missing can here? That. So we did that in a typical Tinder watch fashion. We did the introductions and then David started with uh, an idea that he's been thinking about. Um, I opened up the general theme for today's event about to be about, and really this is inspired by Tom Diaz. This is about knowledge discovery. So once you have a bunch of notes in your Tinder box file, how do you find them? Um, and that's ultimately what we want to talk about. But part of that knowledge discovery is what David's talking about. And I, I'm quoting him now. He said, words only have meaning uh, words only mean something in the context which they are used. So part of what we're uh, trying to discover here when we're discovering notes and files in, in our Tinderbox files is the context of where those particular words are used and how they are used. And frankly, from a tactical perspective, that's part of the reason why I have chosen to adopt the methodology of putting prefixes in front of my notes. I don't know if you guys recognize or seen that, you know, ENT hyphen for entity, P-R-O-D hyphen for product. Perfect, perfect example of that, the word one password is a word. But in the context, that word could either mean the name of the company one password, or it could be the name of the product of the from the company one password. Same word, two different contexts. And if you do it, and if you set up your Tinderbox profile, um, uh, I don't want to say appropriately, uh, in, in a way that helps you discover that context as effectively and efficiently as you can as you navigate your files, it's a huge win. And so that's partly uh, an example of what we're talking about. So to me, I'm taking what you're just saying with my limited skill set. What I would likely do is make it an attribute or make it, you know, even two attributes. Is well, there another? Yeah, there, there are no way in the context of what I'm saying, though, in terms of, and, and again, let's just jump into tactics real quick while we're at it. Um, and so David, uh, thank you for that. That was super interesting. And I will, um, uh, re-summarize that with a bunch of notes later. Um, but let's just use a, a couple of examples, uh, and we'll use the prefix example, uh, as one, um, uh, really quick. So let's say you've got a Tinderbox file that's got hundreds of notes, thousands of notes. You're looking at a file here that's got thousands of notes. And in that file, you have two different notes called one password and one password right so here's an example of we've got two two totally different concepts one password and one password and for you there they're, you know you want these things to mean very specific different things and let's say now you're over here and you're writing an article about this concept of password management and in this article, you want to be able to say, there is a company that has a product, okay? And so I want to, I want to be able to get link to the company that is one password that has the product one password. Now, if I'm using the methodology of zip linking when I'm doing that, and this is, this is a step towards discovery, I'm now wanting to link to the company or product one password. Which one's which? <laughs> right? You don't know. Perfect. Right? You don't know. And let's say this one is, this is the product. 
And this is the company. <coughs> now let's go back here and do it again. I put in some text that helps me understand the distinctions between that. I still don't know which one is the product and which is the company. And so how I've gone about, for me, how I've gone and going about doing that is, yes, Bruce, you're right. You could put a, uh, you could create a user generated attribute, which I actually do all the time, uh, which we'll call prefix. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create a string and we'll say, in this case, the prefix is entity. And in this case, the prefix is product. Yeah, and this is a perf, uh, excuse me, not prefix. This is, uh, this is a perfect example too of, you know, at some point, you know, and as I love, Seth Godin talks about this as a lot. At some point, in, in, if you don't give yourself constraints with the tools that you're using, you end up having anarchy. And so there's a certain level of, yes, you need to adopt and learn. A you know, and I'm, I'm going to, let me take a step back real quick. Um, I was actually having an argument with one of our um, community brethren last night. Um, did I say our word argument or discussion? It could be both. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's a great version of semantics. Are you discussing or arguing? Depends on intent. They both can be positive things, but we tend to call arguing uh, have a negative connotation, which I don't actually agree with. Um, so we, he was talking about it, and he's like, why do I want to learn Tinderbox and go through all of the effort of learning Tinderbox versus the archive, versus Rome, versus uh, LoQ, versus Emacs? I mean, there's different tools out there versus... Uh, notes versus um, Evernote. And my answer to him was, at some point, you're going to have to do some learning. And Mark Anderson was involved in this, too. And we were kind of like, at some point, you're going to have to do some learning. Because learning is the process. At some point, you're going to have to adopt a tool. So no matter what, there's going to be learning and there's going to be tool adoption. My personal choice of why I've chosen to use Tinderbox is it gives me the most flexible constraints possible. Right. And as long as Tinderbox exists, I'm going to keep using it because in the process of learning Tinderbox, I'm also learning the standard language of the Internet as some XML, CSS, HTML, um, semantic languages, such like that. So that flexibility of learning is great because at some point, if Tinderbox ever goes away, I've not learned some proprietary stuff that's only related to that app. All of this learning is applicable to any other computing system. So with that in mind, a little side note. So I've got these two notes, the company, the product. I still have the same problem. How do I figure out which one of those is which, even though I have put in the prefix, and this one is the prefix entity, and this one is the prefix product, okay? So how do we go about doing that? Well, the way I've solved this, and again, this is, the, some, this is now using the constraints of the tool to the in a way that benefits my knowledge management and capabilities. Um, so I've got two words, one password, two notes that are both named the concept of one password. The two notes mean and have a totally different semantic necessity for me. So what I've learned to do is I will type in the word entity. So now I know this is the company entity and this is the one for product. Okay, so now when I go to writing my article, I can say one password. Now I actually know which one's which, right? I'm leveraging the constraint of the software to know which, which one's which. So I can put the company there and I can put the product one there. Now here's, again, and this is just the proclivity of some software. I don't want to actually writing them in, in terms of writing. I don't actually want the prefixes and the notes there. So I can just delete those out. And so now I have is there is a company, 1Password, that has a product called 1Password, and I can now click on them. There's the company. If I hit Command, apostrophe, I can go back. There's the product. So now I've written an article that lets me go back and forth um, in a way that is uh, very effective. Um, let me take a note here real quick. Hotkeys, Command, apostrophe. Okay. So uh, that is one. That is one style of writing. Yes, go ahead. Is it possible to take the attribute and pass it into the beginning of the note? It absolutely is 100% possible to do that. And let me show you how to do that. Um, before I get there, I want to pull up 
a, no, a file just so I have some resources behind the scenes. Okay, so, so I've got this concept called entity. I've got this concept called product. Now, as you're thinking about it, uh, tactically too, one of the things that we need to be thinking also is one of processing load and necessity. So do I necessarily want Tinderbox constantly rewriting you know, the, you know, you could use action code and, uh, and rule. So there's a concept in Tinderbox called action code. And action code essentially says, Tinderbox, go do this, right? Perform some action. And the way to go about implementing um, action code in Tinderbox, is, and it's kind of a glorious thing. If you, if you abstract out, and a lot of people have trouble with this, um, if you abstract out the nature of what action code is, action code are basically instructions. Tinderbox, go do this. And so then Tinderbox is going to ask you, well, what do you want me to do and how often do you want me to do it? So the, the, the concept of action code is just a scripting language. Tinderbox, go do this. Now, then you have different ways of telling Tinderbox how and when to do that. So Tinderbox has a concept called stamps. And what stamps say is, when I take the discrete action of pressing this button, the stamp, go do that. So let me, let's create a quick little stamp using action code. And we'll say, we'll call this one append prefix, right? And so I can say name equals um, prefix plus, and I want to put a little hyphen, just for, yeah, and this could be any code you want, plus the name. All right, and we'll come back to this in just a second. So in this stamp, in so this is action code and these are instructions. Hey, Tinderbox, make whatever's on the right side of the equal sign, e uh, make whatever's on the left side of the equal sign equal to the, the value of the expression on the right. In other words, hey, Tinderbox, make the name equal to whatever calculation you do on the right side of the equal sign. So that's what this action code is saying. And so let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's go over to our, our demo file here. And then we are gonna to get to the discovery session earlier today because I think it's super interesting. All right, so let's say I've got two notes here, okay? And they're both name one password. And in these notes, I have prefixes. One's called a prefix and one, uh, and they both have their prefixes. One's password, one that. And if you look here, I'm saying, hey, Tinderbox, Go take the your note, your your prefix, and append it with a hyphen to the name of the note. But what I want you to do is I want you to gra first grab the name of the note and then append this prefix. So when I do that and I hit apply, I screwed it up um, because I deleted the name. Because what I did, it didn't know its name first. So, oh, no, no, it worked. And the reason why it looks like it there is I need to, okay. So you see what Tinderbox did when I performed that action was took its name and appended the prefix. And now I can do the same thing with product. Okay, that's one way to do it. So a stamp, and let me, uh, let me take my notes for the, um, the follow-up notes. So stamp, okay. So a stamp is a one-time action, a, a, a one-time application to one or more notes. There's a one-time application of action code to one or, no, more, one or more notes. So let's do that again. And remember, I just said the word one or more notes. Okay, so now I've got this stamp called append, append my prefix. And so now I can click this note. If I hold the, sh uh, the, the command key down, I can select two, two notes at once. Uh, let me take that note, hold, command, and click. Okay, and so when I do that, so I've got both notes selected and I hit apply. And the tinder box will go and, oops, I gotta actually have my stamp selected here. Both notes selected, hit apply. And now you'll see that action, that one time function stamping of the action applied to boot both notes simultaneously. 
Okay. So that's an example of applying this action code with a one-time stamp. Now let's make it a let's take it a bit um, a bit farther, and say uh, what well what how else can we perform this action of using this? Well, let's go ahead and say we have a resources folder. Okay, and in our resources folder. In our resources folder, I've got a folder called um, a companies folder. And I have another note called uh, products folders. All right. So now I have new, new notes called uh, companies folders and products folders. And at this stage of the demonstration, um, I'm now wanting to start applying this other tinderbox concept, which is really important, which is called prototypes. So let me do this and let me show you why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add in a prototype. And now I'm going to go here. I'm looking now, I've, I switched over to outline view. Sorry, let me do this. I switched over to outline, I'm switching over to outline view. I'm going to go down to my prototypes and I'm now going to create two new attributes. One is P product. One is P entity. And I personally use, and this is a semantics issue. Tom Diaz and I go at this all the time. Um, I personally choose the word entity versus company because an entity, a company tends to mean in, in, in my world, an enterprise, a commercial operation. Whereas for me, I also deal with government regulators. I deal with nonprofits. I deal with other, other types of companies. So for me, Calling it the word entity allows me to then say, well, this entity could also be a nonprofit, could also be a um, a, a government uh, organization. It could be a group a grouping of people, not necessarily just a commercial operation. So that's why I use the term entity. Now, here is another way to use action code. <coughs> so let's go here and I'm gonna say prefix and I'm going to say um, on add. Okay, and so similar to what we did before, I want to have all of my companies have the word, the prefix of entity, and I want to have all of my products have um, and on end, and I want to have all I want to have all of my products have the prefix of product. Right, and so what I'm now demonstrating too is this uh, this concept of uh, essentially what's called prototyping, and what prototypes allow you to do is create a note, and then a relationship of this note, the the special note called prototype, that links to other notes, and in that linking you get this concept called inheritance. Now again, and part of um, part of the discovery concept too, which is really important in Tinderbox, is we can we can bounce back and forth between views to help us discover our uh, discover our knowledge. On one view, I'm discovering through map view. On another view, I'm discovering through outline view. All of the same notes, just applying a different view. Now, so let me give you an example of that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to create a, uh, a note called LastPass. And I'm going to create a second note called LastPass. All right? Similar issue. One's the product. One's the company. You'll see if I go over here. I've got my map view view of that. I've got my outline view of that. Um, but now I wanna start organizing these a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop into the companies folder, my one password. I'm gonna go drop into my products folder, my one password. I'm gonna tab in to have these get, uh, these be, you know, be organized into some somewhat of a structure. And so I've now got a product one password. I've got a one password here. Now watch what happens here in the application of action code. Um, I'm going to drag LastPass into company, right? So I've now got LastPass, this note in, in company, and I have LastPass, this note now in product. And if we pop over to map view, you'll now see I've got a resources folder that has companies and products in it. And within those companies and products, I can drill down in. And I can see that I've got two products there. And I've got are two companies there and two products there. So also, uh, so far so good. 
But here's one of the things that's really important when you're thinking about knowledge management and knowledge discovery. What's critically important here is you want the human, AKA you, to do the thinking, to do the stuff that the computer can't do. You want the computer to do the things that it can automate for you automatically. And the reason why you wanna do it, it's not that you can't do it manually, you wanna do it automatically because what it does is one, it reduces, to, uh, it, you know, repetitive functions are best done by the computer. The other thing is if it's doing those repetitive functions, it's gonna be less prone to error than you are, right? Because we all know my typos, we've seen them for the last two years. If I'm hacking and typing and going fast, I'm gonna interject errors. There's absolutely no doubt whereas Tinderbox will not. So what I want it to do is I want it to automate functions. So the other application of uh, uh, action code, so the first application we showed you is, hey, Tinderbox, do this one-time application of um, this app, uh, action code when I specifically and explicitly hit the button stamp. And so, for example, I can use that using the document expector and hit apply. Or in this case, I can go up to the file, uh, the, I can right mouse click here, for example, hit stamps and apply that action code as a one-time explicit function. And look what happened. It applied the stamp, but guess what? Why didn't it work? It didn't work because this note doesn't actually have a prefix, right? It doesn't know what to apply the name to. And so this, the, action the, the action code did exactly what I told it to do make the name equal to hyphen plus the prefix. Well, in this context of this note LastPass, there is no attribute associated with LastPass that has a value for prefix. So if I were to go in here and put the prefix on this note, and I were to then type in the word, uh, we're in company, so I type in the word entity. Okay, and now I fix this like this. And now I apply the stamp again, now it works, right? Because that particular note had the value of entity. Now, a bunch of manual steps here. Let's go back to the point I said earlier. I want the tool to automate the things that the tool can automate and let me do the things that I do well, which is hopefully I do it well, is thinking. So I create this concept called a prototype. And now what I can do is I'm gonna say, and then I have this other concept called on ad. So let's say when I am a on ad, what do I want you to do? I can take this code here, place it in the on ad like this, same action code, but in a different context. And now what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, Tinderbox, when I add a new note into another note, AE into a container, I want you to apply this one-time application of the action code that I just wrote here. So let me, now let's move this uh, one password out of the, um, the products container. And I find sometimes from a demonstration pers perspective, uh, the map view is easier to show this. So I've got a product now, products folder here called one password. And I've got a note here called LastPass, which is actually the product of LastPass. right, just so we can see uh, the distinction between these two notes. And what I wanna do is, and again, I can see it here in the outline view and I can see it here in the map view. Views are just different, um, views are just a different view of discovery. When I drag this on here, when I let go of my mouse, remembering the on ad for this note, actually, we didn't do it yet. What I wanna do is I first need to apply the prototype of product. So essentially what I've just done is I said, hey, Tinderbox, this folder is the products folder for um, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the products prototype. And what I want you to do is apply this action code when I, when I uh, add something to this note. So now that I've done that, and I'm looking here, you'll see that this folder has the prefix of product and it has the on add action of make the name the prefix. So when I drag this over and I let go, okay, it still didn't, you know, look, and it still didn't work. Now, why is that? Well, why that is, is because remember, look in the interaction code, this action code's still saying, make the prefix, you know, pull the prefix from me, right? But this note LastPass still doesn't have a prefix, right? So how do we solve that? 
I can go back to my on add action code here and I can say, right? So now what I'm doing is I'm saying, when I'm doing an on add, I'm saying, hey, Tinderbox, when, you, when someone's added to me, when a note's pulled into me, what I want you to do is take the name of that note and give it the prefix of the parent. So the parent note is this note. The note that I'm out, on and out of here is doing when I do that. So when I drop that in, there you go. So what Tinderbox has just done is it said, I'm going to grab my name and then I'm going to go look at my parent, which is products folder and grab its prefix and add products folder. And so that is now giving me this ability to use the action code that I just wrote in a different context. Because remember this, this idea here between this stamp and this, um, this, this on ad for this folder is context. The context is apply this stamp to me. This context is apply the prefix from my parent to me. And so Tinderbox has a really incredible concept of context. Are, am I the, is, am I the note, as a note, am I the parent? Am I an ancestor? Am I a grandchild? Am I a descended from? Those are all really important concepts of context. Michael? Using tool called Tinderbox. Yes. Number one, and I'm sure you'll get comments. My opinion is this was just excellent. It was simple. It was clear. It was well-paced. I am so thrilled. To, I took a screenshot of this so i just wanted to make that comment i have two questions a after two years having that coming from you thank you because <laughs> i've been working really hard i appreciate that <laughs> you, you you did it at bruce speed um so i just want first i just want to review the steps here because you you did it incrementally and you showed us um you know what the final product would look like so initially then we really don't need to create a stamp is that correct no, no, you don't. You don't have to at all. Because remember, right. let's, let's go back to the key insight I was trying to make. But let me just. But, but before yeah. you continue yeah. on, I just yeah. want to because I have a feeling I might not be the only. One. I I know I sometimes am last in class, but um, there might be someone else last with me. <laughs> so um, I just want to be clear that the final solution, which you built incrementally, was wonderful. Is that you don't need the stamp. No. What you're going to do is you're going to put your action code into number one um the prefix goes into the parent um the parent level so that's where your attribute goes and then once you have your prefix there you have your on add code which you have very clearly displayed and that's really all you need and Correct. then once you Correct. have well, I don't that need, i don't need this stamp i would i would go right. ahead and i'm going to continue just for a second here because yeah. I, I i see heads nodding um, it's the, um, so once you have done that and, and what you also did a little quickly, but it's fine, you implied that you really need to take just a moment and it's fine to do it on the fly, but you have to create some structure. So for example, uh, in writing, um, I just wrote an article that's going to get published in the California psychologist and I made a mess. I used Tinderbox and oh my God. You, there's no amount of money you could pay me that would let me put any of that on the screen to show all of you because it was such a mess. Um, and the way that I ultimately made sure I had all my information is I literally had to up arrow and down arrow to go through everything and make sure that I didn't, you know, that I didn't miss anything. So I would have benefited mightily from this approach where I put my articles, say, in one folder, where I put some of the products I was using in another folder, and maybe I put some of my essential points. I just have three folders. Those three folders become the parents, and I'm a little unclear of the difference between parent and ancestor, unless ancestor is just one above. Um, but so they're in the parent folder, which is the, not the root folder, but the sort of the root folder for that category. Is that right? Yeah. And okay. And then once I've done that, all I need is this little bit of code. I decide what my attributes are going to be. And now I have some wonderfully organized information. And should I wish to change it, all I have to do is drag it from one parent category to another parent category. And it'll dynamically change because you haven't really hard coded anything. It will. It will. You're close. But then this is where some additional action code will come into, come into play. 
So okay. before, before I move on, um, is that helpful to others? I mean, that kind of review. Yeah, it was awesome. Yep. Actually, I've just got a, a couple of little um, questions. Um, is there any reason that the prefix begins with a capital letter? It's just ease of reading? It's my convention. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And, and I remember you talking about this some time ago, I can't remember when, a while back, and the, the hyphen um, with the space, I think you might have said is for ease of action code later or did I was sort of well I, I, okay yeah good, good question um mm. so remember a space is actionable too I can use mm. regex I can use other things to find a space for me visually I want to see a hyphen right mm. so again for me it's a convention it could be a colon but the, mm. the reason why I don't use a colon is com colons actually mean something in computing you know and specifically mm. in tinderbox they're used for dictionaries yeah. so I try to stay stay away from and the other thing is in names. So sometimes you might create a name like this. Hello, world. Uh, hello, yeah. world, right? You can do these things. Hello, world, okay? So here is three different concepts of terms used in computing they all are appropriately inaccurate and there's nothing necessarily wrong with them per se but then again know your customer know your audience know your partner right one of the most important things in business is to know your partner and know their strengths and know your weaknesses and you know and try not to continue to poke at their weaknesses not to say that this is a weakness in the world of computing, particularly your Tinderbox, your partner is Tinderbox in this context. And the language that Tinderbox is using is computing. And the syntax of that language for Tinderbox and computing is certain characters mean really important freaking things, right? So in computing, particularly in a Mac OS Unix, a forward slash means a path designator. I'm in the, I'm in the container, hello, and now I'm gonna to move to the container world, right? So when Tinderbox thinks this, it thinks you're giving it a path. Go to hello, then world, right? So why confuse your partner when you can just do, no, no, I'm not trying to give you a path. I'm just trying to tell you some designation of notes, right? So in that regard, just for the sake of our demonstration here, what I'd really wanna do is not do this, in order just so I don't confuse my partner unnecessarily. And if I can be more explicit, I want to do that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And also too, when you're using regex extract um, dot split and other operators in Tinderbox, the way you, know, you can help your partner, if you're more explicit with your language. And so I'm telling my partner, no, I don't want you to, I don't, I'm not giving you a path. What I'm giving you is a prefix and a space in this. So uh, I now can then, and the other thing when you're doing this is you very want to, you want to build, you want to be building into your notes for the context that works for you, the patterns that work for your brain, right? So for me, the pattern, hello, hyphen space is always a prefix. Now you may choose to say, hello, hyphen uh, explanation, uh, hello, explanation point. Hello, pound, pound, doesn't matter. The prefix can be any pattern you want. The key is to find a pattern that works for you and then consistently use it. Now, the beautiful thing with Tinderbox is if you don't consistently use it, you can use it in more advanced action code, you can change it. And I'm gonna go to that changing issue in just a minute. Michael, so, there's, there is one concept that you, I just wanna be sure you do have a chance to get back to. You mentioned that when you put it in a folder, and if you want to switch your I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. But Philip gave us an aside, so I want to do this. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to use, uh, um, you really you really want to avoid. And, you know, this is a, a rule. I'm, not, I'm going to make this a rule. It's like, you know, you know, in, you know, in some religions, you're given that, that thing not to do just simply because that keeps society safe. The rule is don't use forward slashes in your note names. Right, just don't do it because you're going to confuse your partner, which is Tinderbox. Similarly, 
parentheses really mean something in computing language, especially in regex. They mean create me a, uh, a back reference stored group. Uh, they're operations for math, right? So don't use parentheses in your notes. So if you wanted to actually create a note like this, I've gotten the convention of using brackets, right? And so for Tinder, you know, that's okay. Or you can use a convention like this, right? But for the most part, brackets mean something too, but they don't mean, they're, they're a secondary meaning uh, over, uh, uh, over uh, parentheses. So using brackets is great. And in your writing, and I can show you this later if we have time today, in your writing, when you actually produce an output with using a template, you can have the template that say, if my name has a bracket in it, then swap it out for a parenthesis in real time. So that's what I'm going to put in my, out my output report. That's more advanced uh, stuff we'll get to mm -hmm. later. And then likewise, essentially what I'm doing now with this one is I'm telling Tinderbox, hello is my, is my key pair for the value of world in a dictionary. Look up the word hello and find me the value of hello, which is, which is world. So in this context, in a syntax of Tinderbox, hello colon this, this is telling Tinderbox I'm a dictionary entry, right? So you don't want to avoid that if you, unless that's what you want. And so in this case, I'm like, I'm not a dictionary, I'm a prefix, right? So this is, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing this up here, but you're just going to confu unnecessarily confuse your partner which is Tinderbox. So I wouldn't, you know, when you're making note names, I would encourage you to do this. Okay. So um, now let's go back to the point that Bruce was making here. Now let's say I want to drag the product last pass from the product to company. Now watch what's going to happen. Okay. And nothing happened and nothing happened because we had not given the prototype of entity to that product category. So let's drag, drag that back out. Now, when we look at this, because I've, and now look, nothing's gonna happen either because I haven't put my on, uh, my on add in yet. So I'm gonna go back to the entity and that. So again, tinderboxing, remember the tool's only gonna do what you instruct it to do, right? So because I hadn't put on its prototype and because I hadn't given the prototype it's on add, when I drag that note into it, nothing happened because I didn't tell it to do anything, right? And here's the other thing, with great, with, with, with great power comes great responsibility. Once I tell it to do it, it's gonna do exactly what I tell it to do. And what you need to realize and learn is sometimes what you think you told it to do is actually not what you told it to do. Welcome to coding, right? And that's where the, the um, that comes in. Now watch what happens if I drag this over. Now I've got entity hyphen product hyphen last pass, right? Why? Because I said, grab the name and append entity, right? It did, it, it did exactly what I told it to do. Now, I'm, and today we're not gonna get into this because I don't wanna, uh, uh, I don't have the time. I can, if we have time later, I can show you, or I, 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 don't, I can't write it on the fly. I just dealt with this last week. What you wanna do, is you write an on you 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 expand the on add language that says first remove the prefix that the, if if I already have a prefix remove it and then replace it with the with the new one you want me to have and that's a slightly different bit of regex to make that happen and and I and I've done, I've already done it but I want to move on to something else really quick and so we can always come back to that so I could have a little bit more advanced action code that says hey tinderbox remove the prefix if I already have one and then add the new one you want me to have. What's actually kind of cool about what you have just where it is, is it shows you a, a little bit of an audit trail. It does, but again, remember, let's take a step back. At the end of the day, taking notes is, is, is useless. It's worth, it, that's, there's no value in that in this in certain sense. At the end of the day, it's, it ultimately, re, 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 you have to focus on what am I ultimately trying to achieve? And what I'm ultimately trying to achieve in my world is I want to write a report. I want to give a presentation. I want to make this process the most efficient as possible. And so if I have this, 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 that's just a lot of crap I have to deal with later, right? When, if you go back to my point earlier about um, 
content being separate from structure, being separate from appearance. What I'm essentially doing, you know, I don't want to say unnecessarily, because in this case, it isn't necessary, is I'm building structure into the name of the note. And in this case, to your point, yes, I'm building an audit trail, but now I've got three layers of structure here. Oh, no, it's uh, I'm just but, commenting on it. And I'm also thinking back to what Chuck had presented on. Right. So, so again, I'm not critiquing what you're saying, but the, again, the challenge is I now have three layers of structure here. I'm both an entity and I'm a product and I'm last pass. And again, in this context, which am I? Am I a product or am I an entity? Which comes first, product or entity? Don't know, right? So yeah. th th those are some of the things that we need to think about. So I'm going to undo this. And I'm now, and I'm, by the way, just for the sake of demonstration purpose, remember views in Tinderbox are nothing more than views of the underlying data. So that same function that I was demonstrating in map view can equally apply in outline. Right. So regardless of the view you're looking at, the functions and the actions are all going to apply and take place. All right. Given what you're describing, that it would be a more involved coding process to delete it. Is it I don't know how to do this, but I mean, is there a stamp that can be created that simply removes the first number of characters? You yeah, know, no, that would, remember, that's, what I was just, that's what I was just saying. Right, there is a stamp and I've got the stamp. I just don't want to waste our time right now me going to find it. Or if you want me to take 30 seconds, I can go find it. I just don't remember which file I did it in. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to the group. Um, Actually, what, what I would like to ask is, um, I've sort of spent a bit of time a week or two ago, remember your video you did with um, creating notes from attributes with functions and stuff. And there you have the, um, and. And um, the on add code, you say if if name is untitled, then yeah, name equals, and then you add the prefix in that code, if you remember. It's about a year ago that you did that video. Yeah, yeah. And I, here yeah. you've got it in an, here seems to be a nicer way though, more controllable, I think, the way you just showed us right now. No, or what's your no, no, experience? No, to, to, totally different context. Okay. Right? Yeah. Mm. So I can do action code that way. Uh, that's fine. But here's here's a couple things that I want to think about here, right? I can do this, but when I do, you know, I'm gonna let's expand this action code a little bit more. So if I hit Option Shift Enter and I put that in there, I get name equals product untitled. Mm. But look, mm. it didn't take on the concept of that I'm a product. So yeah. I'm now going to expand this action code a little bit more, and I'm gonna say prototype. equals um, key product, right? And so essentially now what I'm done is I'm distinct uh, and you put a semicolon in between actions. So, hey, Tinderbox, first apply the prototype of pre-product, then give it its name and then, you know, then, then construct its name, right? So now when I do that, okay, it, you see, it's now been given the, proto uh, the pr uh, prototype P product and its name's been constructed. Okay, here's a problem with doing that though. Uh, it's not a problem, but this is something I just recently learned as well, which is really cool. If I drop this over here, I get entity product and you'll see it's prototyped in, and, uh, and we can add that same code here like this. P entity semicolon all right so let's do that again and you see now i got entity entity product as we'd expect and i've got now the entity prototype okay now all of this on add stuff is great and it, and it works and it's pretty cool and it's fun but here's a little trick i just learned let's say i want to move for whatever reason i want to move product into entity but i don't want the, na the nature of product to change. So what you can do is you can add in here another operator called uh, the pipe operator here. And what I'm saying is prototype equals P product unless because of the, 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 um, the pipe operator, again, another language in computing is an or, or statement, you know, or this. So in this context, what I'm saying is this is shorthand in, in computing language that says prototype will equal P product unless or 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 in, you know, in this case, unless the value of prototype already has something in it, 
right? So now watch what I do here. And I, I'm, I spent a year and a half doing a whole bunch of manual crap until I learned how to do this. So now if I move LastPass up into here, you'll see that I retained, uh, um, let's see, why didn't that work out on deep rocks? Okay, that should not have changed. Prototype equals P entity, oh, that's this, okay. Let me move this back here. Yeah, okay, now look, so uh, that's why it didn't work. Let me do this again. So that's prototype. I'm going to create a new note. And this is kind of, we'll call this one new product. And you'll see that new product has the, uh, the, uh, the name, the prefix of product. It's got the prototype or product. But because I put that or statement in there now, I can now safely move this note into another container. And it's going to retain its prototype P product. It's not going to be reassigned the new prototype P entity because I already had a value. And, I, and I'm telling Tinderbox, if I already have a value of a prototype, don't change me. All right? So that's a really important concept. On that same note, you're right. I've since recently, in just about the last few months, started using this pre prefix methodology. But give you another example of that. Let's call this one called the terms folder. And I'm going to apply, and I'm going to now create another prototype. We'll call it P folder. Right. And I'm now because of visuals, I'm going to make give P folders that and I'm going to give them an on add. And I'm going to give them a prefix. So now, you know, if I have a note that I am going to, that I know I want to be a folder as opposed to a note that has a value and information, you know, so think about this. Here's another analogy. Every note in Tinderbox at when it, when it is first born, like a newborn baby or like a, the first cell at conception is a stem cell that has unlimited potential. And the second that you start applying prototypes and changing the values of it, and oh, by the way, and every note has every attribute associated with it, whether or not you can see it or not in displayed attributes or not. So when a note is born in Tinderbox, it has unlimited potential. And then when you start applying prototypes and you start giving values to its attributes, you start specializing that note and you're taking it from a stem cell of unlimited potential to a heart cell, a lung cell, a liver cell, a bone cell, bone marrow. So in this case, when I apply the the uh, the the note uh, folder, the uh, the prototype folder to this note, I'm changing the terms folder, this note that now has unlimited potential, and I'm giving it a specialization. I'm saying I want you to specialize for the time being to be a folder for me, right? And so that's a really kind of interesting concept there. And in this case, I'm going to rewrite the action code for this folder a little bit. And going back to what you're saying, another way to do the function of adding a prefix, if you don't want to do it with the app attribute methodology, would do this. And you say, if name um, does not equal. So in other words, this statement is saying, if your name has no value, or excuse me, yeah, if you're, uh, or another way, if your name is equal to nothing, that's another way to do it. If your name is equal to nothing, or or you could say if your name is equal to, and this is a better, better way, untitled. Okay, because remember, every time you create a new note, Tinderbox automatically gives that note name the word untitled. So what I'm saying here is if your name equals untitled, then what I want you to do is I want you to make the name equal to the prefix of term plus the name, all right? And I'll, I'll make this a little more compl complex in just a minute. So if your name equals untitled, then make the, then make the name equal to the prefix of that. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and create a P term. And I like to have this little symbol here for my terms because they make me happy. And so I'm going to go back to this folder and I'm going to say, and then I'll say, and prototype equals P term. 
Okay, so now when I add a child note to this new note, uh, what did I do wrong here? If name equals untitled, name equals term plus name. That should have worked. And this is where you sometimes need to mess there's with. No, there's no squiggly closing bracket in, in front of the dollar name. Uh, that could be it. Let me see. That's probably it. Uh, so prototype equals, ah, that's part of it. It's failing because of that, because it's an assignment. And this one is, yes, that's the failure right there. Good catch. I needed to put my curly Q, Q clo closing bracket element there. So now if I do that, damn it, just a minute. Let's uncomplicate this a bit. If prototype equals untitled, then the name equals term plus name. That should work. I was doing so well. What am I doing? If name equals untitled. It's going to be really simple when we figure it out. What, where is my typo? You need to spell term correctly as opposed to the abbreviation TRM? No. Okay. Do you need the final uh, mention of the name, of dollar sign name? Yeah, I do. Because I wanted to use okay. it. Oh, uh, actually, no, I don't. You're right. I mean, I'm outsmarting myself. You're right. That's what I want. Ah, crap. All right, let me go. Let me grab it from one of my other files, just because I don't want to waste any more time uh, debugging what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, where's one of my other files here? This one, and you're all getting a master class on how to do great and then make a mistake. Here it is. So I know this one works. So I use this one all the time. And let's see what the difference, we'll see what the difference is in just a minute. So term, and we want this one to be P term. Now, when I add it, still didn't work. What the hell am I doing wrong? Where's my other file? Yeah. This should work. All right, I wanna come back to that later. Um, let's get these out of the way. Um, let me make a bench. So could I just take over that code from that video file, yeah, that, that Tinderbox file that you had with that video about dynamically creating notes? With yeah. that on add action, the first time that I add a new note in that folder, I have to add the prefix manually. Then every other note I add has the prefix. So this behavior that you're showing now, I've noticed that. Yeah, um, let me, let me, I've got, I'm, this is gonna drive me crazy. Well, well, do you wanna take a break from it? Sorry for yeah, this no. Yeah, and by the way too, this is, um, this is a great example of sometimes you need to step away from the problem to uh, then, and sometimes what I found, sometimes it only takes like five minutes. You step away from the problem for five minutes and then you come back and it miraculously fixes itself. Uh, let me just make sure this one works. Okay, this one's working. So here's an example of some action code that does work because I just tested it. And we'll change this one to P term. And we'll change this one. Okay, and, and, and this one's a little bit more complex because you're seeing what I'm doing here too is, so if the name is equal untitled, I'm asking it to grab the prefix of its parent and then adding that. So let's go ahead and add the prefix. Oh, shit. What am I doing wrong, guys? I just figured it out. Uh, Philip, you're on, uh, you're on mute. Okay. The prefix has no, the, the folder, the parent has no prefix. No, no, it's even worse than that. I'm a total idiot. Um, right. And, and, and let me explain what, let me explain just what happened. I have unbelievable muscle memory when it comes to this. And for me, 
the on ad is always the last thing on the list. Oh, I'm, so sticking the the pre- I'm sticking the action yes. code in the prefix, not the on ad. Yes. Right. I probably should have said something because I've been wondering about that the whole time, but I assumed it was me. No, because no, it's just my muscle memory says on ads always at the bottom. So I wasn't even reading my on ad. So yeah, now, I'm sorry I didn't say something. Now if I actually go in and give it its instructions, <laughs> there you go. Right. And it doesn't have a prefix because it didn't work. So now if I go ahead and add in the term. Okay. R- let's go back to what we originally said. The computer is going to, your companion is going to do exactly what you ask it to do. And if you're not telling it to do anything, it's not going to do it. So if you stick that command in the wrong place, I don't know what you're asking me to do. All right. So Can you just quickly show the code one more time, please. Sure. Thanks. Just wanna... By the way, so there's a couple ways to do that. You can do this here, or you can go to the inspector and look at it there. And that's a great example of, remember, attributes are nothing more than values, whether or not they're displayed or not. So the inspector gives you the ability to view your code, right? Thanks. So prototype equals peak term. If the name is untitled, then I want you to add the prefix of the parent plus a hyphen to the name. Okay, now let's let's keep on, oh, by the way, while we're at it, Let's say I want to edit, I, I, you know, I do this all the time. I want to grab my code here. I paste it in here because I don't want to use the inspector because I'm too lazy and I want to start editing it. What, look what happened. Tinderbox automatically changed because text is for stylized co- tech, um, content. Um, computing language, just like forward slashes, parentheses, straight quote, quotes versus curly quotes mean something in a big way with computing. So the way to fix that is you turn on your smart quotes, you turn off the quotes. And so now I'm telling uh, Tinderbox, don't make my, when I'm writing in this text, don't, I'm telling you, don't make my quote, don't turn my quotes into, into, uh, into little smart curly quotes. I want you to leave them as straight quotes. So now when I type a quote, it actually is a straight quote. So it, as opposed to here, so let's do that again. If smart quotes are on, Tinderbox says, oh, you want your writing, you want it to be a little pretty curly quote. And when you when you say smart quote, let's define what we mean by smart quote. Smart is essentially the context of where the quote is in the string. In the beginning, the little the little round part is at the bottom of a of a, of a quoted string. And at the end, the little the little round part is at the top of the quoted swing. So a quote is smart when it knows its context. Am I at the beginning of the line or at the end of the line? So because I had smart quotes turned on, Tinderbox knows I'm gonna pay, may, I'm gonna look for the context of where you're writing your quote, whether or not it's the beginning or the end of the line. If I turn that off and I go like this, Tinderbox says, okay, I'm not making the quote smart, so I'm gonna leave them as straight quotes. And so if you if you decide to like quickly, you're 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 working fast, you don't want to open up the inspector, you want to grab your on ad code and you want to drop it into the text to quickly edit it, just make sure you turn on and off the smart quotes. So that you don't screw up your action code. I can't tell you how many hours I've wasted because there was a freaking curly quote in my code and it wasn't working. So that is, um, you know, that's that's another kind of a little side note convention that I think is really important. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention to you while we're at it, uh, and if we have time at the end, I want to come circle back with you on the, um, on the swap, or we can do it next week on the swapping of names back and forth. Um, the other convention we wanted to discuss here and today, ah, I know what I want to talk about. So let's go back to where, so all we've done right now is a bunch of collection, right? We're collecting ideas, companies, and specifically we're collecting ideas on companies, products, and terms, right? And so let's take a term and we'll call it password, right? And so there is a company product one password that has a product, uh, has a product one password that lets you manage your passwords. Okay, then I can go ahead and remove those and those are all good. So now, because I've done that, this, whoops, come on. 
and we can give that that it's um put this one back in because I kind of messed it up a little bit one password or a product all right so now you see the sentence I've just written says there is a company product one password that has a product one password that lets you manage passwords okay so there's a sentence we've just constructed now in tinderbox that's that's the, that's this idea of what we just talk, talked about is the concept of zip linking which is which is kind of cool and um and super useful um zip linking now the the other thing that you might want to do is let's say we want to do this passwords are um passwords are uh a um a what do we call it in the computing language it's a knowledge test is a what you know knowledge test to verify your identity but more specifically your authority to log into a site okay so here we've just defined this concept of a password all right yeah, okay now let's say um i'm wanting to um i'm writing my article and i'm wanting to pull in uh, and let's say we'll do this and we'll call this article. All right. So again, I want prefixes everywhere where I can. So this is going to be called article on that's password management. Okay. So I'm, I'm writing an article on password management. And now because my ultimate goal is not just to be collecting notes for notes sake, because that's just like, um, you don't get to actually bear any fruit uh, necessarily with that. Um, so I've just added in, I went to file templates and I added in the HTML template. And now I'm going to go to window text, uh, show text pane selector. And that's what opens up this under the windows menu. And so now when I view that, I'm seeing, okay, article password management. There is a company one password that has a product one password that lets you manage your passwords. Pretty killer sentence, totally true. These guys are awesome. They just came out with uh, one password eight. So if anybody's looking for a password manager, one password's freaking great. Okay, now here's my challenge though. When I'm publishing this article, I don't actually want the prefix article in my output. So how do we deal with that? Well, let me show you how you deal with that. So uh, I'm gonna go, so I don't have to rewrite it. I'm gonna go grab my function. And now I'm gonna go to file, built-in hints, and add the built-in hints capability into this file. Sorry, file, built-in hints. Okay, so I went to the file menu and added in built-in hints. Now, remember at the beginning of the class, we talked about, or the meetup, I'm sorry. I, I've turned this into a lecture, so I called it a class. <laughs> at the beginning of the meetup, we've talked about the use of action code. And remember, so we've learned about action code with stamps. Let me just do a quick review. A stamp is a one-time application of an action code. And on add, as viewed through the Death Star here, is a one-time action of action code. But in this case, it's not me pressing a button, it's me adding a note to, a, uh, to another note. So what are other applications of action code? You have links. You can have action code triggered when I link one note to another, and it will trigger and it will, it will do so directionally. You can then also have action code applied when you remove a note from a folder. You can also have action code applied when you apply a rule. And what's a rule? A rule is nothing more than saying, run this action code as, as fast as you can in queue to everything else that's going on in the file. So every two or three seconds, cycle through and run your action code. And then finally, you have edicts. Edicts are run it every once in a while, every two or three minutes, whenever you get around to it. So it's all the same action code. It depends on the context and how often you want that code to be running. And then the one other place where action code can be run is in agents. So let's go, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done it that way. I can go yeah, create an agent, right? 
you can have action code run on an agent. So go find me these notes and then trigger this action code. That's where it's done there. And then finally, uh, just to kind of wrap this up, then I'm going to move on to the next thing I wanted to say. You can have action code run in the different browsers as well. So for example, you could go here and you could say, hey, Tinderbox, go in the attribute browser, go find me a bunch of notes, just like I did with an agent. And then once you found those notes, go apply this action. And that action would happen one time at the time of finding those notes. So the action code is a fundamental way of giving Tinderbox instructions and the different methods of triggering those instructions depend on its context. Am I doing it as a one-time action? Am I doing it something that I want you to be doing all the time, et cetera. So with that backdrop, let's go back here. And I'm now gonna go down and, and then what Mark recently did in Tinderbox 9.1, I believe, is he introduced this idea of the, the hints library and this concept of functions. Now a function is nothing more than a different kind of action code. It's a different place to put your action code. So then rather than writing all your code up here in the inspector, you can create a function which is essentially a note that includes action code. And here I've got a function called create a short title for me. And it says name dot skip to find the pattern. This goes back to the point we were talking earlier about patterns. Look for the first, um, look for the first, and let me do this just so you can see it. Look for the first hyphen in a name and a preceding space, capture everything after that, and then stick it in an attribute called short title. So now watch this. We don't have an attribute yet called short title. So let's go create one. Okay. So I'm now creating an attribute called short title. And while I'm at it, I might as well put, on, put it on the entity too. All right. And again, short title is, is a, a complete convention that I've invented, right? This is... I came up with a name, I made it up, I'm doing it because it works for me. You can call it anything you want. I chose to call it short title, right? So I've created an attribute called short title. And so what this function is saying is, hey, Tinderbox, go skip to the name and drop what that, that value in short title. Now, here's the thing, I could do this. Now watch this. I can take this same code, stick it into a stamp, go like this, say create short title. Paste that code in here, hit enter. So I've now got a stamp called create short title. And let's go make up a, another note, test note. And I'll go here, we'll say prefix. And we'll give that up. Oh, no, got to spell it right. I don't want pref, I want prefix. Okay, let me just delete that, we don't need that. And we'll say test. So I've, I've created a, 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 I've created a, um, a, 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 note, a, a note that's got the a prefix called test and I'll just do like that. So we have it. So I've got a note called prefix called test and I've got a note that's got a blank short title. And why again, why, why, why am I doing this? Because down the road, I want to be able to use the name of this note without its prefix. And so I need to park that value somewhere. So in this context, I can manually do that with this code. Make the name equal to the short code, hit apply. So what this code has just done is it said, look at the note of the name, skip to the hyphen with the space, capture the rest, everything after that, and populate short title. So I could do that in a stamp, and I could do it on a one-time basis. I could do it on an on ad as well. But I don't want to have to think about it. And it's something that I want to have, because I've adopted the convention of prefixes, it's something I want to have happening on in the background all the time. I want it to be there. I don't want to have to think about it. I want it to be muscle memory meaning I want Tinderbox to automate that function for me. So let me give you another example of that. So we'll go test, uh, test, test two, note. Okay, so I've got another note called here, test, test two, note. And I'm gonna give it a short title. Okay, this time I wanna take the same action code that we applied at a one-time application of a stamp. And I now, want to put it in this note's edict or this note's rule. So now because it's in a rule, 
Tinderbox is going to keep cycling through running this action code all the time. Has the note, has the name changed, has the short title changed, anything like that. Because of my spelling errors, this is one of the reasons why I want this to happen because I want Tinderbox to be updating things for me all the time. So I'm going to hit apply. And because I've now applied that rule, look how fast that happened. Tinderbox is cycling through updating the note. So let's now, let's now say I changed it from test two to change to test three. Now I click away, come back. Tinderbox has now changed the, the short title. Michael, it, a question, if you don't mind. Yeah. What would help you determine whether you want this to be a rule or an edict? Um, size of file. For so mostly for me, size of file, right? And my and you know, and in the and the and the follow up on that is size of computer. So I'm on an oh. M1 Mac with the 68 megabytes of RAM. So I can actually afford to put nearly everything into into um, rules because um, I've got so much processing and computing power, it doesn't slow things down. But in so some edicts of my will be basically, edicts are basically a rule that operate less frequently? Yes, that's the only difference. Rules, rules happen first, edicts happen later. The other reason why you make, make the choice, as you get more complex code, you may need the rules to run first before you have your edicts run. So it becomes a timing issue. My problem <laughs> with Tinderbox, Tinderbox in short is that if it were a restaurant menu full of choices, I would never be able to decide. Yeah, you, you've, got, you've got the paradox of, paradox of choice. And, and as we've often said, if there's one way to do something in knowledge management, there's 10 ways to do it. It really comes down to your background, your convention, where you come from, where you're currently at. It's like teaching tender, in, in elementary school, they call it scaffolding. You start where the student is and you scaffold them up. And depending on where they are, it can be very different. And I just saw this wonderful video, I'll drop it in the follow-up notes, that talked about, um, it, it, bear with me in the last two minutes, it was a great video that talked about teaching to the average. And in the 1950s, uh, we invented a bunch of new um, uh, fighter planes, and we had this incredibly great new tool, but the pilot's performance went down, and they couldn't figure out. I'm like, same pilots, amazing tool, everything's going to shit. Sorry, I know we just recorded this. Um, and they couldn't figure out. And it turned out the reason why everything was going bad is they designed for the average. And so what a researcher went out and did is he said, let's go evaluate all of our pilots on 10 different attributes, height, weight, arm length, leg length, all that. And what they found was that across all of our military pilots, there was actually no average. There was no average pilot. And so what that meant was we were designing for no one. So we were building incredible planes that actually were designed for nobody. We're, when you design for the average, you design for no one. And so what they realized was they then went back to the uh, manufacturers of the planes and said, look, we have no average pilots. You need, for example, to build a seat, an adjustable seat that can adjust to the, the that individual pilot's height. And they did that across all, they looked at all of the different attributes and, and rather than designing to the average, they designed to the edges. Here are the edges of what a pilot in the U.S. military is. Your plane must design to re achieve the edges, not the average. And when they did that, totally refactored the, the, the cockpit of the plane and the pilot's performance went through the roof. Because now the pilot with a cockpit designed to the edges was designed to, to them individually, not for the average. And that's what Tinderbox provides us. Mark Bernstein has given us a tool that designs to the edge, not to the average. And that's why this is so powerful. Uh, but let me go, let me go back to an, um, the other point that I was trying to make here. So I've got this concept called, now I've got, now I've run this value. And on, on these notes, you'll see that I'm running them as rule, as, as rules in here. Part of the reason you perfectly fine to put this in edict and rules, but what happens if I actually want to have more space to write that. What if I want to string multiple action codes together? Well, that's what functions are for. And so the way to do this, I now can take the name of this function. I can go up to my products, paste the function here in the rule. I can go to my entities, paste the function here in my rule. And so now what I've done is I'm telling Tinderbox, hey, Tinderbox, if you're a note that has the prototype P entity and P product, I want you to use the rule function short title, which is actually over here and you'll find the code over here. 
And so by doing that, I can now edit this function in one place and that those edits are going to immediately propagate against these two prototypes against all of the notes that are using those prototypes. So now if we go look up and having done that, let's go ahead, you'll see, um, let's go add our short title to each one of these. So we did, and this is where you, we now want to um, use our quick stamp, type in the word displayed attributes and get our resetting our inheritance of our displayed attributes to our, to our respective notes. And now when we look at the individual notes and we'll get those notes, this is a company, that's a company, that's a company, uh, okay, well, might as well switch that one to a company too. That's a product. This is where you, you sometimes you have to do manual work or you run an agent. I've got a, a in, in a future class, I've got a, a, um, a little convention, I, 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 an agent specifically for, I call it Mr. Fix-It. And what Mr. Fix-It does is go through the entire file and update prototypes and update names. And so like if I've, if I've adjusted some action code and I need to then later go back and refactor that for companies, um, I can do that. So then I go like this, whoops. Okay, now having done that, you'll see these all now have the one, the short title one password, this. And now what's going on with this one? Well, the reason why this is happening is it grabbed the regex I used, grabbed the first entity up prod, and then after that, it grabbed everything else. So it's still got the prototype prod. Now, there's regex you could write to like strip that out and all that to have purity, but this is a perfect example of Tinderbox doing exactly what we said we wanted it to do. Now, let's go back to what the whole, why I did all this last 10, 15 minutes of conversation was we had this thing called article, and I'm up here, and it says article, password management, all of this. Well, I don't want the prefix article in my output. So I can go down to my template. And if I look at my HTML template, it says, what are we doing in this template? We're saying, hey, Tinderbox, grab the title of the note, put in the text, grab its children. Right? And so let's go down here, back to our article, just to re reinforce that a little bit. And we'll say introduction. We'll grab this out of the article up here. We'll paste this down here. And then we'll say body illusion. Right? So I'm adding a little bit of structure to my, my article that I'm writing. You'll see I've got this now wonderful article, introduction, body, conclusion. That's happening because the template I'm using says, grab the text of the title, stick in the text of the note. And so on that note, just so we can see the amble, preamble. Right, article, preamble, introduction, body, conclusion. You see all of the pieces coming together in this world of attribute management. And so now if I look at the template, Hey, Tinderbox, go grab the title, go grab the text, go grab the children, and then process the children with this template. Now, I'm going to leave this to you guys. I don't want title in my output. I want short title. What do I do? What do I do? Is that using the action code, the value? Or sorry, the export code value? Yes. What do I do? And so you need, where it says title, you need to carrot, value, parenthesis, um, then um, the dollar sign, short title, close parenthesis, and the final carrot. Okay. Should I have short title in in smart quotes? I don't I know. I can't remember. I don't, I don't I know. Can't remember. Well, I, don't I think know. we do, because it's a string. Yeah, the not, value. I, but, I can't remember right now. But, but not in export code. So now, not because, in export code. now because of that, what do you expect to happen? We'll have the short title. We should have the short title. The short title. To... The short title instead of the title. Mm. Okay. 
Now, if, like, we ha if we have short title, <laughs> look, ah. but if we have short title, we don't, right? So we yes. go up here and we type in short title, and then we go down here and let's create another prototype called P article. And let's go down here and we say for P article, we want to be using the function short title. And we can pull over here for our action code. And we drop that here in the review and we go like that. And because articles and it's helpful to have the visual affordances that, um, that badges give us an article in, as opposed to a page, an article has multiple pages or entries in it. That's my convention. So now I go up here and I'm gonna apply the prototype article. Now I have a short title password. Password. Now, if I preview it, what's going to happen? We should have password management. Yeah. Okay. So what we've now just demonstrated, and this is not what we never, we actually didn't get to the discovery topic that we wanted to do today, but I think this was incredibly valuable. We just discussed, we just demonstrated everything about Tinderbox. From collection to curation to creation to collaboration, and then ultimately contribution, the ability to publish. Because now let's do the final piece. I go to file, export. Um, so I, I go to text, I go here, I go to file, export as note. That pops up my drop, drop this into preview, pop that into here. I go here. I go to my desktop, I go to preview, bear with me. So there's my finder. I've got this note that I just exported as notes. And there's my browser. Now I've got an HTML file with the note that I've just exported out of Tinderbox. Now check this out. Um, now, you can use the command line for managing notes and such. So we're going to go um, uh, CD. Go back to my uh, go back to my roots. So I'm on the desktop. I type list. It gives me what's on my desktop. I go CD. Um, what is the name of this preview? Okay, list. So I'm now in the preview. So I'm in, the, uh, and again, so I'm in the preview directory on my desktop. So this view is nothing different than this view. It's just, am I using the fancy WYSIWYG UI of Mac OS, or am I using the command line of Mac OS? That's the only difference between these two views. Paths are the same, okay? So I'm in the, now watch what happens. I go, I'm gonna grab this file here. I go here and I say, hey, Tinderbox, use the application called Pandoc, right? I want you to take the standalone file that's in the same directory as I am called artpasswordmanager.html. And I want you to output that file to a Word docs file. And now, I have a Microsoft Word document. Ta-da! That's Tinderbox. Right? And, and that, Bruce, and that, so, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I just want to encourage you, Bruce, if, if you, if Michael uploads that TBX that we just done there onto the forum and you have time in the next few days, load it down, just pull it apart, put your own information in, alter the prefixes. As Michael said, a lot of muscle memory. Um, I mean, a lot of parts that I've been playing around with the last couple of weeks, I've been reading through the forums and things. What I've been finding most of all is just to um, backwards engineer some of the files and available on the forum. Um, it takes time. Um, I, I do appreciate that. And I, mm. oh, that is the biggest challenge is, mm. yeah, I mean, for example, in my practice, we're currently pumping out 40 reports and we have mm. two weeks to get them all out. Mm. Tinderbox possibly could have been helpful. Um, the downside is that I'm in a multi-user environment. So I have four staff and we all have parts of the report. 
So that makes it hard to use Tinderbox. We um we use actually Google and we have an application script that um that that pulls in. Uh, but for my own personal writing, I keep coming back to Tinderbox and so, so, your your suggestion is very helpful. So, so let me let, let me let me interrupt you there, Bruce. Um, yes, I actually do have workflow processes that I've worked with my team to actually make two Tinderboxes files work, just like you check in and check out code into into a centralized file. It's doable, but it's painful, and there's management issues. And I was just talking to Chuck Wade about this on Friday. Um, about this very issue. I think we have a significant opportunity now as a community since we've evolved in the last two and a half years to go back to our, 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 our benevolent ever overlord that is Mark Bernstein and say, please, 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 in Tinderbox 10, can we have more collaborative, collaborative features? And this, is, and this is what we mean by it. And this is why we need them. And we don't necessarily want you to reinvent Google Docs, but we do need to find some way of copying and pasting templates between files, some way of collaborating a little bit. And if in the backstage, it's, it's, this is an opportunity for us to communicate to the developer to help us get a tool that, you know, they'll evolve the tool to where we want it to go. And again, this is another reason why I so dearly love Tinderbox is you can never have that conversation with Microsoft Word ever, <laughs> right? But you know, with Mark, you can, and with Mark, you actually learn. And you, I'm not just learning about using his proprietary tool. I'm learning about the open standards of commute computing and the evolution of computing since the 1950s. And those, that fundamental knowledge is now transferable everywhere. And if you don't mind, I know we've gotten a little about nine minutes over, but I do want to kind of give you a little sneak peek because I'm so excited about what I figured out this week. If you guys okay. wouldn't mind, if, just bear with me to let me show you five minutes of something that's I think is particularly really cool you guys with as you're doing something? that I just want to point to people those who are left um that Wynn put in a um hyperlink to his new poems about poems for technological age awesome yeah we'll get the chat out there as well so um so on that note, what we've done is and again i I heard that something the other day that was I thought was um really apropos for this is, you know, if, if anyone's familiar with Buddhism, when Buddha, Buddha became enlightened 2,500 years ago, he, he, he walked under the Bodhi tree and gave a lesson uh, uh, that he called the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. And one could argue that every single Buddhist lesson for the last 2,500 years has been all about that one first lesson. And the only difference between every conversation about a Buddha, Buddhism since then has been context. I would argue the lesson that we just had with Tinderbox is exactly the same thing. Every single thing about Tinderbox going forward is going to a conversation about Tinderbox going forward will simply be about context and application. Because in the last hour and a half, we've covered nearly we covered all the potentiality of it. Now it's just going to be about my own personal use case, my own personal style, my own personal context, and not just the context of your use or your understanding, but the context of the Mac OS and the context of what Apple is doing with the computing and the operating system. And all of those are the dynamics that are context that we need to consider. And the context of what Microsoft is doing with its Windows operating system and then Apple's reaction to that. That's the context we're talking about into which this lives in. And I think it's a really important you know, thought and idea to step back from. But I know, I know we all wanna go and we, I know we all wanna leave. Um, next week, I'm gonna be giving a class on how to use Tinderbox for teaching and all of the aspects of that. And Mark will be promoting that. The following week, I think I want to emphasize um, uh, emphasize what I'm doing here. And let me show you this file. I started this file yesterday, just so you're aware of what's going on. And the context of the situation here was this. Um, let me go to my desktop and find that file. So I have a, um, I have, um, working with my business partners, we have, we have literally hundreds and hundreds of documents that we need to be able to go index and do because we've got 10 years of research and reports and thoughts and ideas and incredibly valuable information in the bowels of our organization that is sitting there in files structured and unaccessible to us because we can't remember, we wrote it 10 years ago and we can't remember what to do with it. And so the exercise that I was coming, I was thinking about, well, how do I do that? I could sit here and manually go through every one of these files and figure out what's in there. Or I could take a step back and think about 
what are the tools in the internet that would allow me to be able to do that? And so I went and found a tool called, um, and in, in hindsight, it only took, it, it literally from start to finish, I was, I had this up and running and um, I had this up and running in about 20 minutes. So there is an open source tool called X, uh, XTIF, exit X, XIF tool.org. And what this is, this is, a li this is a library just like Pandoc, open source. And what its purpose is, is to go in and pull metadata out of files. So, so watch this, it's really freaking cool. Um, so I'm in here and I go back here and I'm on my computer and I see all of these files sitting here on my computer. So I've installed XDIF on my computer. I'm now sitting here in this directory. So let's go CD backslash, go back to the root. We'll now go CD and control shift docs. Okay. So now I'm in the control shift docs directory. I can type lists, which is a command and command line to be able to let me see what's inside of a file. And now what I want to do is I'm going to, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to change this file name because um, I don't yet know how to escape spaces, but I'll do that in just a second. And I'll say, just like we did the pandoc command, I'm going to say uh, xif tool. So I'm telling, to, I'm telling the computer, go get the application x, xtif. Uh, X if tool, just like as if I were calling Word, and I'd say, go look at the folder case studies, right? Space, and again, these are all just just like Tinderbox conventions and language, just like we were doing with Action Code. Uh, this is saying use the X if tool to look at the folder um, case studies and output to export dot five CSV all of the metadata that you can extract from every one of those files. All right, so XDIF just created for me a CSV file. And if I open that CSV file, what I get is all of the metadata from everything, every single one of those files. I get its directory, its file size, its file type, all of that. All right, now look what happens. And if, if I open this up, here's all that content. I can scroll down and imagine, you know, so I've got a few hundred lines here. The file I did yesterday with uh, one of my colleagues had 85,000 rows in it. Just to give you the extent of how large this is. So now I can come here and I'm going to now Paste that, oops, I, mean, I need paste special. Paste that content in here. And because of, we're in computing, we've got a, um, uh, a well-established pattern. Every file is precursored by this pattern. So I can grab that pattern, hit explode, tell Tinderbox to explode on that pattern. So now I have Every single of the individual files that were in that file exploded on that pattern. You see that? Then I did some automagical Becker stuff that all of you can do. This is nothing more than uh, just taking, you know, essentially, let me tell you the logic of what I went through. I went through and said, okay, wow, what do I got here? I have an interesting file. I have a bunch of um, metadata about these different files. And what do I want to do? Well, what I want to do is pull out each of these different metadata values into a Tinderbox file uniquely associated with that file. And in order to be able to do that, I need an attribute value for that value to be placed. And then I need regex code that can parse out this file and stick that in. And I want to be able to do and build all of this code really easily. So I, I created a series of stamps that literally automatically wrote this file for me. Okay, so here's the library file of um, am I in the right document. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm in stamps, not functions. I, I created a I created a file that literally wrote this file for me. I didn't I didn't write any line of code in this file. I used a stamp that generated this entire file for me, and I can show you how to do that later, right? And so 
basically what this with all this regex is doing is saying go into the file and extract all the metadata with each of these lines of regex if you're a date i need you to parse the data file um, a little bit more specifically and now and then when you oh let me go back here too when i show you um, I'm asking you to apply the asset P asset. I'm telling you to change its color to green so I know it's been processed. And then I'm also asking you to pull out the publication year and then split the directory file so I can start identifying some terms of the files. Now look at this. I select each one of these notes, apply the stamp, extract data. And now I have the metadata from every single one of these files. And then I can say, hey, Tinderbox, go run an agent, or better yet, go run, run attribute browser and tell me how many documents I have by year. 2017, I've got nine docs. 2022, I have 16. 2014, I have 22 docs. So within a couple hours of work, I've been able to literally suck out the metadata of over 500 files. I know their sizes, I know their names, I know their directories, I know their terms. Right. These are case studies. So I can go, hey, Tinderbox, go find all my case studies. And then and the next step I'm going to do is reconstruct the path. So I'll have a, a file URL here that will then allow me to then click a button in Tinderbox and go open that file. Oh. That's what you can do with this tool. <laughs> Freaking amazing. <laughs> so um, there you go. Thoughts, comments, ideas, reactions? Mentally the exhausted. Idea, I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> the idea of having a tool, so XF, um, what was it again, XF tool? Yes. That that can do this. Now, it's only a command line tool? Yeah, it's only command okay. line. Okay, all right. Um, I mean, obviously, you know that you've gone Michael speed. And, uh, you know, so you're, you're showing something, but then, you know, the stamps and the other things that you're creating look like that would take a while for other people to be able to duplicate. But it's uh, fascinating to, to have to be, that. To be honest, it would take, you know, I, I, all joking aside, most people weeks, days. I mean, if you think about literally, you know, you knew two years ago when I started this, Bruce, I couldn't spell the word regex, let alone actually use it. Right, I could barely spell the word prototype, le like legitimately spell it, let alone use it. Um, oh, yeah, no, you so put in there, time and there's been an evolution things. of my own learning. It's not just about the tool, but learning how to write, learning how to think, learning how learning abstraction. For me, most of the learning here is about rewiring my brain to look at the world through the view of, of the metadata and attributes. That, frankly, until my brain switched to looking at the world through the lens of metadata. Uh, I, I was un, unable to unlock the potential of Tinderbox. Now, I, I literally, for me, it's kind of become the matrix view. I mean, I look around the world and every time I see something, I'm sitting there breaking it into metadata and attributes and breaking it up. Yeah, just like what uh, David showed me in that map. Just one quick question, because I know we've gone way, way over. Yeah. Um, if I was interested in using something like that, to look at, say, different PowerPoints and try and find terminology that aligned among them. Yeah. Does it have the power to do that? In theory, yes, and I believe it does. That's why I'm taking the extra effort to go through this. And the other thing I've learned from this process in the last two and a half years is trust in, like, I've now gotten to the point where I trust in my five season management, knowledge management process, right? I trust that I can collect notes, that I can create notes, that I can that I can curate notes, that I can create notes, that I can collaborate with other people and then ultimately contribute it. So right now with the XDIF tool, I didn't even, I've never used it before until yesterday afternoon. Um, so I'm in that collection and curation stage with it, but I so fundamentally understand the fundamentals of, of what's happening now in the system that I have complete faith that I'll be able to get to the output I want in the time when I need it. Um, and that also comes to this kind of a more existential belief in the idea of abundance, right? Well, that, it, it looks like a future project that you can probably teach well, about. Well, I'm not, the future project is this afternoon. I mean, I have to, I, I have a deliverable tomorrow to do exactly what you just asked for. Well, so. I understand for you, but I mean, if it's something that you want us to know about. Well, yeah, it is. And that's, and those are things that I'll teach. And just so you know, that's why I have my Patreon thing. And for like people like Chuck and Paul Christie and others on my Patreon channel on Friday mornings, we dig into this. And then ultimately just, you know, again, and I'm not to turn this into sales speech, I'm actually doing consulting for specialized projects for people too. 
So like yeah. the one thing, so going back to that point of understanding the process, Bruce, I get that it can be really daunting to think about that. We have to generate all these 40, 40 reports. But as Peter Drucker, Drucker so famously said, if you want to do something new, you've got to do something different. And so part of the step back is take a very Descartian view and, and every once in a while say, is what I'm doing working for me? And if not, what do I need to keep doing, stop doing or doing differently to be more efficient down the road? And can I do those different projects in parallel? Can I keep doing what I'm doing and then in parallel learn this new thing so that when it gets ready, can I start interjecting elements of the new process to then at some point down the road, I've moved from where I am at, I am at point A to eventually being at point you know, F with an entirely we, different process. I mean, just to comment on that, you know, it took me a while, but about three years ago, we developed a process that, you know, is, is pretty efficient because most organizations, if you had to get 40 reports out in two weeks, they would Couldn't you know, do it. explode. Couldn't do it. And, you know, for us, it's a matter of combining a certain degree of dictation, a certain degree of Google Doc sharing, um, a certain degree of abstract apps script and spreadsheets. Yeah. You know, so it's not, but I could see where that could possibly be a tinderbox, but it's a case where, you know, we have a system that works for us. Um, well, and, and again, it, it works for you as long, until at some point when it doesn't. And, and, and there, and I guess this is, I think the balance that a lot of organizations do, especially senior leadership. Can I keep using the process that I've got now without messing with it? So until the point where I can retire and then leave it for somebody else. And I think that's partly what David Eddy's trying to solve, right? is a lot Bingo. of people built all of this technology and most senior executives are trying to get to retirement to not have to deal with it. And let's let the kids figure out how to document and use this technology when my hover ele elevator no longer works and no one can hover their elevator up to the top of the building, right? That's what uh, Isaac Asimov and the foundation series really kind of addressed it. Like, you know, pre-history, pre-society built hover elevators, fast forward 5,000 years, half the elevators no longer work, but nobody knows how to fix them. Right. And that's partly the problem of what we're trying to address using this knowledge management is how do we do that? And to yeah. that point, I think our Tinderbox tool does need to not, I don't want to overly challenge Mr. Bernstein on this and hopefully he watches this though, is I think there, our tool does need to start evolving to help us get to that point as a community to do a little bit more collaboration and not have this just be a solo thought leadership tool. And I think if that collaborative element of Tinderbox can evolve along with our needs of collaboration in the tool, not to be necessarily be to become Google, but maybe, you know, like, or some kind of collaborative Google sheet, but somehow getting to a point where we can have those levels of efficiency, I think it'd be incredibly valuable for the entire community. My target, uh, Michael, is basically hiring a summer intern and who basically doesn't read software, doesn't yeah. know how to read code. And their skill is how to take notes. And granted, you're going to take 100 notes and throw 95 of them away, right? Yeah, but, but which, which what take... makes 95? It's like the famous Wanamaker quote. I know 50% I know of my advertising wasted. I just don't know which 50%, right? <laughs> so, the, so I only really need 5% of those notes. I just don't know which 5%. So Yeah, that, and, and basically... <laughs> It's, it's when you're doing primary research, which is basically what we're going to drop into the laps. I mean, I'm an hour from now, I'm having a, a, a coffee with an undergraduate. You know, he's right now, he's in, in uh, romancing finance because obviously finance is incredibly hot in business school. Yeah. Well, the only way that stuff works is built on 50 year old systems. Exactly. And uh, how to put these in. So I look particularly your list of tools that you use, your toolbox yep. that you circulate. I mean, the, the stitching this stuff together. I mean, I've, I've been coming out of the world where people want to have one tool. Doesn't yeah, work. tool doesn't work. Michael, yeah. you're going to upload the file that you produced today? I will, yes. Thank so, you. Yeah. All right. Good well, night, hey, folks. I, I apologize for going long, but you know, uh, thank you. Oh for no, you you passed going long a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, but thank you for letting me get my 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 fun little ex exercise out. I, I spent a lot of work on it this week, and it was really enjoyable. Um, it was right. good. Everyone, I may not be here next week, just as an FYI. Uh, my daughter's coming in from DC, and we may go play. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> nice. it will be recorded. Uh, see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> be sure you watch 
wash your brain. <laughs> and, and then, uh, and then, David, for your PhD student, and and literally for your work. No, no, no. This is no, 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 no. Undergrad. The enemy. These are undergrads. This this has to be aimed at undergrads. Yeah, it will be. But like, my PhD, PhD, my PhD son, his solution for fixing legacy systems is rewrite them. Not going to happen. You've just mentioned what management wants is just enough time to get out the door. Yeah, just enough time so I can get retired and not have it be my problem. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully your retirement pol portfolio will still still have air in it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. to be continued. Um, yeah, uh, exactly. But yeah, so let me know if you need any help on that. Let's um, because I think there's processes we can work on here. All right, everybody. Thank you. That thank, was you. thank you, Michael. Thank you, Bruce. Bill. Take care. Thanks. Bill. Thanks, Bye, Philip. Bye. Bye, David. Thank <laughs> you.